Well, joining me now to discuss this and much more, Dr. Ben Carson. He is the former Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, a 2016 Republican presidential candidate and a pioneering former director of pediatric neurosurgery at Johns Hopkins. He is now the founder and chairman of the American Cornerstone Institute and also the author of a new book that I'm going to tell you about in just a moment. Dr. Carson, welcome back to Washington Watch. Great to have you in the studio. It's always good to be with you, especially in person. It is. It is. I always like that. It's much better. Uh, I like Zoom. Zoom is helpful, but uh, in person is even better. No question about it. So let's talk about first the new book you have coming up america's perilous fight and it is overcoming our culture's war on the american family you and your wife candy wrote the book tell us why well <clears throat> our country was born in the crucible of war uh, we didn't gain all of our freedoms because somebody gave them to us we fought for them and uh, <clears throat> we're in a situation now where we have to know that we're in a battle for the soul of our nation. You know, Benjamin Franklin, when he came out of that Constitution Hall in 1787, he was asked, sir, what do we have here, a monarchy or a republic? He said, a republic, if you can keep it. Right. And, uh, you know, we're getting pretty close to losing it now. Uh, you know, our founders worked very hard to make sure that this was a country that was of, by, and for the people. Marxism is working very hard to make sure it's a country that's up for, by and for the government. And uh, if you want to really change us, to fundamentally change us, what do you do? Well, you're probably not going to overcome us militarily. However, you might be able to do it from inside. And the key fundamental baseline element of our strength are our families. And uh, if you can destroy that inner working strength of the fabric of our foundation, then you can destroy the country. And you look at all the things that are happening, and you look at the advantages that children have who are raised in a traditional nuclear family with father and mother. <laughs> right? I mean, that's what the left calls it. If you, if you grow up in a family where your dad stays with your family, married to your mom, somehow today that's considered to be privileged. Right. right. And it's blessed, but I wouldn't necessarily call it. It's the way it should be. It's, it's the, the way, way it should be. be. It's, the, it's the foundation that God established for us. And interestingly enough, both the liberal and the conservative think tanks and research organizations all show the same thing. And that is children who are raised in those families four times less likely to live in poverty, seven times less likely to have teenage pregnancy, uh, much better academic uh, performance. And those pathologies have only been trending in the wrong direction. Right. I mean, when I authored the nation's first covenant marriage law here in Louisiana back in 1997, I used those same statistics, but they were not as bad as they are today. And the covenant marriage law was designed to strengthen marriage prepare young people for right. marriage so that they would stay married and their kids would have the benefit of an intact home. Right. Because right. The, the numbers show, they don't lie. Well, the, the, the whole concept of the having to hold until death do us part has changed as to having to hold until you get irritated with each other. Right. And, you know, the fact of the matter is you take two people from different environments, gonna there's going to be friction. There's going to be friction. <laughs> but you got to work through it. I always say it's like rubbing two pieces of sandpaper together. But if you keep rubbing them, they Eventually get smooth. They get smooth. That's right. <laughs> so it, it's not only the family that we see the left coming after, but it is faith, the Christian Absolutely. faith in particular, because Marxism has shown us historically that in order for the government to dominate, it has to take out these other institutions, right. which is the family, which is uh, the, the church, mm -hmm. and, and even self-government so that people become more reliant upon government. That is absolutely their key premise, get rid of God. Uh, communism, obviously, big component of, of that there, too. And, you know, what we talk about in the book is how that has declined. You go back to 1972, 90% of the population <coughs> uh, identified as Christians. Right. 50 years later... 
63 percent. Right. Well, and that goes back to our schools in part, right? Because the the year before I was born, uh, prayer was taken out, our Bible was taken out of our schools. The next year, prayer was taken out of right. our schools, and so I mean that has been the one common really denominator, if you will, of our society has been our public education system. Exactly. And we've kicked God out of there. We've taken the Ten Commandments out in the 1980s. And in fact, early in the program, I talked about how here in Louisiana, they're putting them back in. Are they? They are. So some good things are happening <laughs> as believers like yourself, myself, as we step into the arena and not criticize and commentate on the chaos, but we actually solve problems. Well, that's so encouraging to hear that that's happening because what I found when I was running for president is that most of the people actually had common sense and they had some values. What they didn't have was courage. Yeah. They didn't step up and so advocate for what so they believed in. So true. And if we don't do that this time around, I'm afraid it may be too late. Yeah. I, I want to play a clip. Speaking of that, I want to play a clip. This is from yesterday. Um, you mentioned something a moment ago, and I, I don't think I have this clip of a, 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 a accessible right now, but you used a phrase that President Joe Biden uses frequently, that we are in a battle for the soul of our nation. And, you know, I don't agree with him on anything, hardly, but that I do agree with. Right. And I found something I actually agree with his wife about. She was on The View yesterday, and she said this. Play clip number eight. Those polls are going to turn. I'm confident of it because as time goes on and as people start to focus a little bit more about what's at stake and start to become educated on the issues and the differences between the, the two men, I believe that Americans are going to choose good over evil. Well, this is a choice between good no and evil. So she got that part right on the Out of View uh, program. Well, well think about it. it. There's one side that wants to save lives. There's another side that says, you can take a baby. And I've operated on babies that were 25, 26, 27, 28 weeks gestation. And you have to give them anesthesia. Right. They, they can, can fill everything. You have a side that says... Don't give them any anesthesia and rip them to pieces while they're still alive. Now, I wonder which side of that is. Is that good or the evil? And, and by the way, that's all the way up till birth. Yes, right up to birth. I don't even understand how anybody can, can, can countenance that. And the law doesn't, really, because if you're accused of murdering a pregnant woman, you get two counts of murder. Right. <laughs> right. You're right. There's no consistency in that, Dr. Right. Carson, as we've moved away from truth as the foundation for our judicial system, which we're seeing uh, this uh, two-tiered system of justice emerging in our country. But I want to go back to the choices between good and evil, because right. I do believe that this fall's election is going to be between good and evil. Now, I'm not going to say that necessarily in terms of the, the, the people and personalities, but the parties have two very clear contrasting visions of the world. As you just pointed out, Democrats and their party platform talk about the ab abortion until birth at taxpayer funds. Right. Republicans, on the other hand, understand that a child in the womb needs to be protected. But there's much more beyond that. I mean, we're debating now whether or not children, minors, can have sex change surgeries. And, you know, the human brain does not fully develop until the mid to late 20s. Right. Some people would never fully develop, but <laughs> I mean, it's quite I'm not going to say what political party they're in, but <laughs> yes, that's happening. But if, if that's the case, you're asking 9, 10, 11, 12, 13-year-old people who have non-developed brains to make life-changing decisions that will affect they, they, them. They cannot, be, they, they cannot change back, and exactly. many of these things are, are irreversible in terms of the surgeries and right. the medications. And some of it is done without the knowledge of the parents. So, so we won't let children get tattoos in most states. We won't right. let them drive until a certain age, all right. because of the maturity issue. We won't let them join the military until a certain age. Right. So many restrictions, but yet we will let them cut off healthy body parts? It really is absurd. Makes, Makes no, no sense, sense at all. And they always like to say, well, we're following the science. 
The science says if you have two X chromosomes, you're female. And if you have an X and a Y, you're a male. Um, it's a binary choice. That's the way God made us. And to say that you can just by your emotional state change that is completely non-scientific. Right. Uh, by the way, folks, I'm talking with Dr. Ben Carson, new book out, The Perilous Fight, Overcoming Our Culture's War on the American Family. In fact, tonight we're going to we're going to talk about much more as we host Dr. Carson uh, for a conversation at the Faith and Freedom Chapel here in Baton Rouge, FRC's Faith and Freedom Chapel. If you would like to find out more, it's 8 p.m. Eastern time. Now, I know you're not going to be able to get here in time, no matter where you're coming from in the country, but you can actually watch online and ask questions. You just need to download the Stand Firm app, the new digital platform, our new app, Stand Firm. Go to the, the App Store and download the Stand Firm app, and you can actually watch it as you uh, become a member of the Stand Firm uh, app, and you can ask questions of that. So we're going to talk on a lot of stuff tonight, Dr. Carson, but I, I want to explore just a little bit further the the issue of life you've been very outspoken on that issue and since dobbs two years right. ago we've seen overturned roe i think corrected the case um maybe the nation wasn't ready for it certainly the political class was not right. because many of them have run from that issue but this is something we should embrace and continue to build a culture of life Absolutely, we should. And we shouldn't fight amongst ourselves. You know, there are some people who say conception, some say six weeks, some say 15 weeks. We're all under the same umbrella of believing that life is important, that we should protect it. And we should keep fighting it at every level until we have a society that respects life. It's building a consensus. I mean, you've watched this develop. I watched it develop. I was a part of that in terms of Educating the, the public, technology, science brought right. the American public to a greater understanding of the humanity of the unborn child. And so we saw the, the country move in this direction. There's no reason to run from right. what the court did. The court put it back into the hands of policymakers. We've got to continue to do the work in the pro-life movement, but we also have to do the work legislatively as well. Well, also, let's just be logical about this. What about all those people who are trying to save snail darters? Now, a snail darter is considerably less complex than a fetus, uh, even at a few weeks. So why are you trying to save the one and not the other? I'd like to hear an explanation for that. I'd like to hear an explanation for a lot of things, like uh, what is wrong with thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not uh, bear false witness, or envy, you know, or, and why not respect your parents? What's wrong with that? Right. Well, you know, if we, if we abided by those 10, we would have a lot less in terms of laws and statutes on the book, on the books. Yes, exactly. Um, I was just having that conversation with my son earlier today. Uh, a new law went into effect in, in Louisiana, and we were just discussing, this was about, uh, you have to stay, I think, 50 feet back from a police officer, and having been a police officer, have two kids in law enforcement. That's great, but you wouldn't need it no. if we abided by the basics. And the problem is we have lawlessness in our society, and it goes right back to what you talked about in your book, The Family. Right. And I hear people saying, your truth and my truth. What about the truth? Right. We know what the truth is. Before we run out of time, Dr. Carson, how can folks get a copy of the book, America's Perilous Fight? It's uh, everywhere books are sold. Uh, you can also get it uh, through Amazon and various online uh, vendors. And audiobooks are available as well. And if you're coming tonight, you'll uh, be able to get a copy and get it signed with Dr. Carson. But also, I encourage you, wherever you are in America, you can join us tonight and be a part of our conversation with Dr. Ben Carson. Simply go to the App Store and download the Stand Firm app. You'll be able to ask questions. Dr. Carson will be speaking. And then we'll be taking uh, questions from our audience. Uh, Dr. Carson, we're, we're, we're out of time for 
today, but there's more tonight. Absolutely. This is fantastic. So I look forward <laughs> to continuing our conversation this evening at, uh, here at the Faith Family and Freedom Chapel. I hope everybody will join us. Thank you so much.